If you had a heart attack right now, there's no place on the planet you'd rather be than in New York City. If you had a stroke, similarly, you'd be right here in the city dealing with conventional medicine saving your life. But unfortunately, if you have heart disease, the conventional cardiology model is not really going to work for you. That's why we're here. We're in functional medicine. Well, neurology is the next, the next brick to fall because the vast majority of patients that seek out neurologists do not have ablative lesions. They don't have tumors. They don't have seizures. They don't have strokes. So the neurologist who's trained to look for acute care issues and treat medically is now faced with a dilemma. What am I going to do with this patient? And unfortunately, they treat them with the same modalities that they treat the acute care patients with. They give them medication. They interface with the brain using receptor systems, but chemically. So they use medical interventions to stimulate different brain regions with very, very poor results in many, many cases. So there has to be a new model of neurology, and we're going to call that functional neurology, which is how does the brain work? And if we go back and really understand the anatomy and physiology and break it apart and break it down into small pieces, we can then start to piece back together when a patient presents themselves with a complex case like migraine, which is really a brain attack, or vertigo, or post-concussive syndrome, or chronic lower back pain. These things are not entities, they're symptoms. And what we need to do is really break down exactly where the deficit is. Where is the functional lesion within that central nervous system or in the peripheral nervous system? And then come up with a plan. So I'm, the brain has 100 billion neurons and each one has 10,000 interconnections. And then we have approximately a trillion glial cells to support all those neurons. And not only does it support it, it feeds the brain and it acts as its, its intermediary with the environment, as well as its, its immune system. James, can you come up here one second, please? Give me a hand like this. I'm gonna move your hand up and down. You're gonna tell me, you just take a look. This is up yep. and this is down. Close your eyes. Up or down? Up. How'd you know that? Just, uh, you felt it, yeah. right? But what that means is that as soon as I moved your hand, receptors in the muscles and joints in your body are hardwired right to your brain. So movement, thank you, buddy. Movement is critical, as is light, because we have two major brain pacemakers. One of them is called the suprachiasmatic nucleus in, in the hypothalamus, and the other one is in the thalamus itself. And the thalamus is driven by movement. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus is driven by light. So think about the vast majority of us. We spend most of our days inside, away from full spectrum sunlight. And the vast majority of Americans do not move or exercise enough. So it's inevitable that the brain will become dysfunctional. Add in trauma, add in medications, add in intestinal permeability, all of these different things all have negative impacts on the way the brain works. So it's incumbent upon us as functional neurologists to look at the way the body's working. We can use really cool specialized tests like video nice tagmography and look at functional ways that the brain is working. An MRI is not gonna show you what's going on. It's a static image. But we can look at VNG, we can look at balance testing, we can look at clinical exam. The art of the physical exam is lost. Doctors rely so heavily on diagnostic imaging. So there's going to be a major shift going on in neurology, and it's going to happen right now. What's going on, as far as I'm concerned, is we are looking at the body as a whole. The, the neurologist of the future needs to really understand functional medicine because everything in our physiology impacts our brain. Then we need to break down the anatomy and physiology of the brain and be able to piece together exactly where in the neuraxis problems are coming from. And once we're able to do that, we can take on these complex cases and really fix them instead of putting Band-Aids on them. Thank you very much.